Hello and welcome to the program. Ukraine is a country that remains largely undiscovered on the world tourist map. But there is one American who would like to change that. Peter Santanello, a San Francisco native, has given viewers of his YouTube channel the chance to learn more about the friendly and welcoming people who live in the country. Peter joins us now. So, Peter, thank you very much for uh, coming into our studio. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So, I mean, you've been traveling for over 15 years now. So mm -hmm. you're originally from San Francisco. You've been traveling all around the world and you've ended up in Ukraine. And one of your like, recent um, projects in mm -hmm. Osipenko, in, in sort of uh, eastern Ukraine, I, mm -hmm. I guess, um, was really popular. It was covered by a lot of Ukrainian media. But you, your most recent project is about beneath Kiev. Um, before right. we talk about this, sure. I want to uh, show a video to our audience, a preview about uh, uh, this project. Okay. Uh, so that was the preview to Beneath Kiev. Can you tell us a bit more about this project and mm -hmm. how you were inspired to do it and why you chose Kiev and uh, even sort of who you choose okay, who, sure. to, to be in this? So I, I did that project in Osupenko, Fish Out of Water it was called, and um, a lot of people said, okay, that's cool, but look, the Eastern Ukraine isn't the full story of Ukraine. And um, some people said, why don't you do something on Kiev? And since I live here now, it made perfect sense. But I wanted to show the city through the people, not through me as a tourist um, showing the main sites, but actually people's stories. So yeah. I took five different people, five completely different backgrounds, and um, pretty much showed the city through their eyes. And were they Ukrainians? Yes, yes. Or, I mean, uh, in one of your um, series, I believe that you, you um, showed the story of a Syrian. Um, yeah, so she's half well. Syrian, half Ukrainian. And her story is amazing because when the war started in, in Damascus, she had to leave and she looked at a map and where'd she pick but uh, Donetsk. And this is before the war started there. Mm. And then she had to leave Donetsk and then she came to Kyiv. And can you tell us a bit about her story as yeah. well? So um, can you tell us a bit about her life and sure. what she was doing here and perhaps the challenges and mm -hmm. um, the positive side of living in Ukraine from her perspective that you found when you were filming? Yeah, well, she told me, she's a good friend now, but she, she loved Damascus. She had a great life there, a very comfortable life, lots of friends. Um, she's pretty much forced to leave, obviously. Now she grew up partially in Ukraine, so she went to Donetsk, where her, mo no, yeah, her mother lived, and um, was only there for about a year or so, I believe. And then when that started, she had to leave, and she came to Kiev. It was the obvious go-to place yeah, where for most of, of Eastern. Came. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So... She came to Kyiv and she started a language school. And she loves Kyiv. She's glad she told me this, which is pretty hard to understand if you've, well, not from this part of the world. She was glad the wars happened. Not because there were problems, people died, people's lives got displaced or whatnot, but because it forced her to move out of her comfort, out of Syria, out of the east of Ukraine and come to Kyiv because mm. she absolutely loves it here. And she found her place and her voice in the city. Yeah, and this is what you document in your film as well, the yeah. different, I mean, can you tell us about that? No, how did you choose what parts of her life, for example, sure. to document? What was surprising for you as a filmmaker? Yeah, I, I try to use, um, I let my subjects tell their story. Um, so I keep it pretty open. And she wanted us to bring us to the, the pedestrian bridge over the uh, Dnipro. Um, Basically, the thing about Ileana is the point I wanted, I really was happy to use her because when in the U.S. or in the West, people have an image of a Ukrainian refugee or a Syrian refugee, there's a certain, there's a certain image that comes up. Maybe someone, especially Syria, right? Somebody in a tent, maybe, yeah. on a boat going well, it's, across it's because, to Greece. I, I guess it's because when you watch sort of the mainstream media, yeah. um, 
you see the, the um, images of the, these uh, boats that are coming over from sure. the Middle East to mainland Italy or, or mm -hmm. France. Um, you hear about a lot of um, death in the, in the Mediterranean, people mm -hmm. drowning and, and these sort of squalor conditions. Right. And, and this is the other side of the story of this person who came to Ukraine and, mm -hmm. and they managed to make a success of it as well. Yeah, and it's, I, I'd like to put a face to, because uh, look, I'll just talk for America, about America because I'm from there. Ukraine's an underdog. Syria's an underdog. These are places that get no good news making it that far. It's only war, bad politics, bad economy. So I'm trying to create an image where let's put a face to this place through really interesting people like Ileana. She's a person, you watch her, you'll be like, wow, I'd like to hang out with her. She's funny, she's interesting, she's educated. That's a lot of people's reactions when they see her on camera. Were you surprised by this, about the, the stories that you found in Kiev? No, because I'd been here long enough and I, and I th that's why I like this country, honestly, is the people. And I find there to be an extreme wealth in the diversity, in just the sheer coolness of a lot yeah. of the people And it was here. the same when you were in Osipenko as well. Yeah, I remember yeah. we, we had the interview before and yeah. we showed you with the family mm -hmm. and um, it was sort of the sense of community as well that you felt when you were there. Sort of people were together, they had dinner together, everyone helped each other, you know. Yeah, it's just a different, it's a, especially Osipenko. That's a world away from Kiev. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I just got back, I just saw the family. And uh, they're just like, they're like a second family, actually. Oh, at wow. At this point, okay. yeah. And can, I mean, the, we spoke about one example about mm -hmm. the, the Syrian, but can you tell us about the other um, people who were involved, who you, who you chose for your project? Yeah, the first person I chose was Alexander Paydon. He's a pretty popular TV star here. I thought that would be an interesting way to start it. That's one look at Kiev. And we're on a, we're wakeboarding, we're at nice coffee shops, we're in race cars. Okay, that's his view of Kiev. Yeah. The second woman, um, Tatiana, she lost three children, divorced twice, hit rock bottom in life, and has come out of that through art. She quit her job as a lawyer, as an economist, and became a teacher of art. Okay, so that's this other guy, Max. He, Ministerka, very interesting neighborhood here. Most people in Kiev don't even know it. It's like a closed off secretive neighborhood. Even now, you can't just get in there. Even mm. Kiev city police can't get in there. Really? Yeah, it's really a mystery. It's the third episode we did. This guy, he was sort of this Gopnik fighter, um, drug addict, misfit type guy, went to rehab, and now has brought his life around. This was a really cool story because he wanted to, he wanted to get it out. He wasn't, he wasn't the guy that said, I didn't do these things, I'm a good guy. He said, I messed up, here's why I went wrong, this is what I'm doing to get out. So he was a great inspiration. Mm -hmm. Ileana, and then this last story is a young guy. I really want to show the future of Ukraine, leave the series on a, on a bright note. Um, Ruslan, young guy, speaks perfect English, well-educated guy. We showed Unit City, which is this new tech center, as you know. Here. Yeah, yeah, I've, like, I've been there, me. and you've obviously been there. It's amazing when you it's go amazing. there. It's, it's yeah. kind of when you walk in from the street, you just walk into this sort of labyrinth of you no know, roads, and then all of a sudden, you yeah. have this sort of modern tech complex where you mm -hmm. have um, all sorts of innovation mm -hmm. happening, and and it's kind of hidden away almost. It's hidden, yeah, and mo and it's okay. Look at two hundred million dollar project. Tell me where that's. I mean, this is from one man's pockets, from what I've been told, too. Mm. That's amazing. It's amazing for Ukraine. It's amazing in the world to see something like that. So we did the episode from Yanukovych's hold house, this old hoarding, take-all corruption mentality, to where money can actually be put towards building the future of this country. So in that last episode, I'm really proud of this one because I worked hard on this one to, to show the differences and show what's possible here. Yeah, and um, it's actually interesting because now you, you have this series um, as well beneath Kiev, but uh, what do Ukrainians think of your outside perspective of Ukraine? Mm. I think I've been told, I mean, I read the comments obviously, like some people will say you're, you have rose-colored glasses and you're near a foreigner, and there's some fairness to that. I'm not from here. I have business in the U.S. I come as an outsider, sure. Uh, but a lot of people, it's... They say, thank you for showing our country in a way where we, did, we never even saw it ourselves. And that's the beauty of the outside perspective, right? I can come in here and I can see things locals cannot see. Yeah. They can see things I can't see too, right? But the same is when I'm in America and 
say someone from Britain or, or Ukraine comes and they're like, wow, look at this and this is different and that. I'm like, oh, wow, I didn't even notice that, right? Yeah. So, well, I, I think actually that's, that's true about the city as well. When mm -hmm. you walk around um, with some of my Ukrainian friends, I've been to visit some places that they had never even been to. Right, right. And it's probably the same in America, in, sure. in Europe, wherever, you know, because people live their ordinary lives. Mm -hmm. They wake up, go to work, they have family. Mm -hmm. uh, it's sort of the daily routine. So, so people don't see this sort of different side of life, the different stories which are happening around exactly. them. And I mean, just a fine detail, like you go into Burispo, the airport, right? And there's so many people there waiting with flowers. That's sort of like maybe America 40 years ago. I don't know. Yeah, now they just wait with boards, you know? <laughs> right, it's more transactional. It's not such a special moment. But yeah. even that little detail, and there's many details here that are special, people are not going to see if, if they're from here. Yeah. And um, do you have any plans to continue this project or perhaps work on a different project in the future? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I'm doing another episode from the family. I just went back. We got water in their home. Um, a lot of people donated. So we really all collectively helped change their life in a yeah. positive way. Now, I remember in that episode, you were trying to um, dig the well. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, we dug it. We hit water. <laughs> it was like six months of digging, uh, six weeks of digging. Uh, but my next project, I want to touch on what we were just talking about, the outsider's perspective, expats that are living, that have chosen to live here and go into their stories. I think Ukrainians will find this interesting. I think expats in the States or Europe or wherever will find this interesting also. Yeah. And um, I mean, w uh, what stories would you be after sort of their business stories or just their personal stories? Why they came here? And yeah, it's got to be more. Um, I want to keep this real this content very real, very tangible. I don't want to just talk about someone's business model necessarily. Yeah. That's not my thing. Uh, we'll touch on what they're doing, of course, but I want to get into their stories and why they've decided here. So they have to be interesting characters. Yeah. And, um, and aside from that project and the project in Osipenko, mm -hmm. I remember that you um, did uh, some work about uh, corruption in Ukraine as mm -hmm. well. And um, obviously it's, it's still a, a huge problem mm -hmm. that is slowly being tackled, perhaps. Um, people have you know, big expectations and hoped it had gone quicker. Um, why is this interesting for you? Do you think that this is a, a sort of negative side of Ukraine that needs to be addressed to, to show this? Corruption? Um, I mean, everybody knows that obviously it's, it plagues every facet of society here. Uh, it comes from the top down. That's how leadership happens in a business, in a family, and in, in whatever, right? So that's unfortunately the way Ukraine is wired right now. But you see the energy of the young people. You see these things like Unit City. You see the potential of the, that this country has. And of course, you want to do what you can to help expose that as an outsider. I think it's, for me, it gives me purpose and it makes me happy to show these, these types of stories. Yeah. And, um, you know, from the, the Ukrainians that um, you spoke to since mm -hmm. you've been here, I'm sure that you, you've um, got many friends in, in Kiev and, mm -hmm. and beyond now. Um, what do they think um, about Ukraine and how it's perceived abroad? And do you think that they think it's changing? Oh, interesting. Um, or, are they still, or are they still, no, kind of negative? What, what, what's it your opinion? It depends who you're talking to. Okay, so I, I've been told by a few people, like, thank you for what you're doing because you've actually helped me stay in Ukraine help me see what's good about Ukraine. And that's cool. And I, I suggest for anyone to go live their life and live out in the world and come back if they can or whatever it might be. But if it has the, the content has the power to do that, to help people see things, then I'm very happy about that. But as far as the image in the world and the West, yeah, I mean, I've, I've hit people in the States that are like, we, we would never have gone there or thought of going there, but thank you for opening up these, these different channels that we don't see mm. at home. And it actually inspired me to go to a place like Ukraine. So yeah, I think there is power in that. Um, one person at a time, right? Like what you guys do, you're opening up Ukraine in a way that most people don't necessarily yeah. think yeah. of it. And, and it's an important task as well. And, and you've been traveling, as I said, for over 15 years now. Uh -huh. um, I'm sure it's a question that you get often, but how would you rate your experience in Ukraine compared to the other countries hmm. that you visited? Um, how are the people different? And what has surprised you compared to other countries, perhaps? Because, okay. I mean, for example, often um, people in America and Britain and mm -hmm. Europe, to a certain mm -hmm. extent, think that Ukrainians and Russians, for example, are sort of the same people as such. Sure. So, no, from your experience, how are they different? What, what have you seen since you've been here? Well, first I would say between Ukrainians and the, I've lived in Switzerland, I've lived in Spain, I've lived in Thailand. Um, if I'm gonna compare Western Europe, 
No yeah. offense, but I, <laughs> uh, I, would, I mean, it's much friendlier here, really. Mm. What people don't get register in the West is the West is so used to a smile immediately, like an immediate given smile on the surface, right? Ukraine's not like that. It's, it's much more real. Someone's going to give you a smile if they mean it. They're not going to, to impress you if they don't want to, right? But once you get beyond that level, and that's where a lot of people misunderstand things. If you come here for five days, maybe you don't get it. But if you spend a little bit of time, you realize, okay, once you open up into a relationship, wow, they can go very deep and be very warm. And that's what you'll get here more than what I got in Spain and more than what I got in Switzerland. Mm. I mean, I made friends in those places, but not at the level as here. But not like him. No, 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 not and, at all. And what, I mean, and what are your plans uh, for the future? Are you going to stay in Ukraine mm -hmm. for a couple of years and perhaps do some more documentaries as well? Or Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I have a business that allows me to live anywhere right now. I love this country. I've had an amazing experience here and I want to do more of this type of work because it's a place I, I feel good about the content and it's a story, in my opinion, that needs to be told. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I think let's leave it there. That's, that's great. Thank you very much for coming great. in, Peter. Thank and you. Um, best of luck with all your future projects. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. That was uh, Peter Santanello. He is a US blogger who's currently working and is based in Ukraine. You're watching UATV.